the Southern Poverty Law Center issues every year uh, an analysis of what happened in the prior year uh, in amongst hate groups and other groups on the radical right. In years past, we've concentrated exclusively on hate groups, on race-based groups uh, like the Klan and neo-Nazi groups. This year, uh, we took a much broader look at the radical right in general because it has grown so very much. What we found was really something quite extraordinary. We haven't seen anything like this for years. Uh, we saw, first of all, hate groups are at record levels right now. On top of that, we saw groups that are all about immigrants, anti-immigration groups like the so-called Minutemen groups that have grown by 80% uh, in just the last year. And most astoundingly of all, we saw a real explosion uh, in militias, uh, and the larger anti-government patriot movement. In fact, there was a growth of 244%. There were 309 uh, new militia and patriot groups that appeared just in the year 2009. It was really quite extraordinary. Yeah, the thing to really understand about the patriot movement and the militias, which are the paramilitary wing of the patriot movement, is that they really believe the government uh, is part of an evil scheme uh, to do in Americans. Uh, this is a movement that sees the government as the primary enemy uh, and is also completely eaten up with all kinds of conspiracy theories about martial law, about concentration camps, uh, about the Federal Reserve acting as an evil agent, and the list goes on and on. Uh, the economy being in shambles, so many people being unemployed, uh, has left a lot of people hurting, frustrated, angry, and looking for a reason why they are in the place they're in. In addition, I think that a great many people out there are very angry over things like the bank bailouts, uh, the bailout of the auto industry. You know, what they see, I think, uh, is a government simply pouring money uh, into the hands, really, of the elites, of people who then go on to get uh, bonuses of millions of dollars at the end of the year, and they don't feel uh, that what the government has done to try and end the recession is really reaching real working people. So there's a great deal of anger and frustration out there, and that is being channeled sometimes by conspiracy theories uh, or by scapegoating certain groups into this kind of rage we are seeing all across the country. The kinds of things we have seen in the last year are, for instance, the murder of six law enforcement officials uh, by people, members of the radical right. Uh, we have seen you know, plots to murder Obama. We've seen plots to murder black people, to murder Jews, and so on. And I think these are all prompted uh, by the rise of Obama to power and these real changes that are happening around us. People are really uh, angry and hurting out there, uh, and many of them feel quite ready to take action. You know, I have personally spoken to uh, a federal law enforcement official uh, who is just astounded uh, by the level of both violence and weaponry that's being gathered out there. What we saw in the 1990s uh, was a huge amount of uh, criminal violence associated with the Patriot Movement and militias in particular. That is really the worry. Uh, you know, ultimately, uh, in the 1990s, of course, the Oklahoma City building was bombed, uh, leaving 168 people dead, including 19 children. That, I think, uh, is the worst case scenario. The Oath Keepers is a really good example of one of the groups that has appeared very recently. The Oath Keepers was started in early 2009 and has grown explosively since then. This is a group composed of military and law enforcement officials who say that what they're all about is pledging allegiance one more time to defend the Constitution of the United States. But what they are really about is the idea uh, that uh, Americans are about to be herded into concentration camps, that martial law is going to be imposed, that foreign troops are going to be on American, so on American soil putting uh, Americans down, and so on. If what the Oath Keepers did was merely uh, uh, pledge one more time to defend the Constitution, there would be nothing remotely bad about it. What is really worrying about a group like the Oath Keepers is this is a group of people who are armed by the rest of society. In the case of police officers, these are people who sometimes have the power of life and death over you or me. And what that means is if these men and women are animated by ideas that are completely false, completely paranoid and groundless, you've got to worry about who they're going to see as the real enemy and what kinds of decisions they make in stressful situations. 
Richard Beck was an iconic figure uh, in the 1990s militia movement. Today, uh, he is going around and giving speeches to Tea Party events one after another after another. At the very same time, Richard Mack today is also a member of the Oath Keepers and a very prominent member of that patriot organization. So he is involved very deeply in the ideas of coming martial law, of concentration camps being set up in this country for good Americans and so on. Uh, and he very much is moving between the militia world and the Tea Party world. So it's a kind of classic example of how we see these ideas from one movement entering the other and there's a lot of that kind of cross-pollination going on. While I don't think it's fair to say that the Tea Party movement as an entity is an extremist movement, uh, I don't think there is any doubt at all that it's a movement that is shot through with radical ideas, with conspiracy theories, and in many instances with real racist feelings about non-white people. Uh, there's a great deal of overlap uh, between the Tea Party movement uh, and the militias and other kinds of patriot groups we're seeing. Oftentimes that overlap is because we have people who are individuals who are active in the militia movement who are also active in the Tea Party movement. But we also see the ideas uh, of the patriot movement very much entering the Tea Party world. So while I think, you know, the Tea Party uh, movement in many ways resembles the Perot movement. It uh, has a lot to do with the idea that huge amounts of money are being spent uh, irresponsibly and so on. Uh, in this case, we're also seeing uh, ideas about concentration camps, about martial law, about the need to resist the government uh, by force of arms and so on, entering the Tea Party movement. You know, whether the Tea Party movement becomes uh, something more like a patriot group, more radical yet, uh, or whether it becomes something else is, is something we don't know yet. I don't think we're going to see another Oklahoma City, but the period we're going through right now feels quite similar to that sort of white-hot period right before Oklahoma. So I think that everyone uh, who looks at this movement, uh, many, many people in law enforcement, uh, are very worried at this moment. Uh, I think a lot of them feel that really uh, all it's going to take out there is some kind of spark to set this thing off.